Namaste, which is also similar to that of Thailand saying Sawadika. Thank you. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to the rest of the listeners in this conference. Allow me to share my screen so that I can start sharing to you the significant topic that I'm going to talk about this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, friends in the academe, I am honored to talk about knowledge sharing and mentoring of research leaders in a global spectrum in this momentous event of University of Kerala, India, titled Global Conclave on Advanced Research and Ranking Modalities. I am indeed happy to meet you all, ladies and gentlemen. I have been to India once that was before the pandemic, that is why I'm happy and so much delighted to share you my pictorial that was taken in your country. First, I would like to extend my commendation to Dr. Samir Babo, who invited me in this conference or global conclave. For without him, I never have the chance to meet you dear mentors, professors, researchers, research leaders, educators, and educational leaders of the University of Kerala. I would say that in our daily lives, we fulfill rules which have features of all these defining characteristics. We are in multitude of ways, actors of social rules regardless of what our profession, regardless of what, who we are, why we are, we have a special role to perform in the society. Since we have rules in the society, it is then that we play parts in society. Whatever the case, once we are placed or place ourselves in a rule, others will expect certain types of behavior of us. For example, in my own case, I have been leading three organizations for five years since it was founded. And there are expectations from me being a leader of this organization, being an educational leader, being a research leader, I need to expect and I need to act out some certain behaviors. Way back in the year 2017, in the month of November, dated 21 to 25 to be exact, I met a gentleman from Pakistan who had been an inspiration to me to put up an organization of which this organization is mentoring a lot of leaders right at the moment since it was founded. I don't know the reason behind why he was encouraging me. On this day, 25th of November, 2017, I was invited as a keynote speaker in the university of which I didn't expect that I am connected right now. I was then teaching in Rachamangala University of Technology in the Northern province of Thailand. But after three years, I was able to go to the metropolitan area, particularly in the city of Bangkok 
and I was able to secure my job at Kasetsar University, specifically in the Faculty of Education. So with this guy who keeps on calling me, encouraging me that I need to put up an organization here in Thailand, I am really puzzled that time because I do not have any idea on how to put up an organization. For me, that time, it's enough that I am not working with other researchers and other professionals across the globe, but without the least of my expectation that I am an organizational leader this time. I did not expect that I could be an organizational leader. And so I need to face a challenge and I need to perform this rule. On the following year, in the same venue again, I was reiterated to establish an organization of which I did really started in the year 2017. And it was just a simple group of professionals in Thailand, particularly the Filipinos who are working in Thailand, Filipino te uh, teachers to be specific. But then in the following year, many people really encouraged me that why don't you make this organization as legal in nature? Uh, well, since that organization is just simply a group, they want it to legalize by simply registering it into the kingdom of Thailand. And so I get connected with one of my mentors also, who I consider to be my consultant right at the moment. And he is the heart of the founding of the, universe, the, the, the organization that I am holding right now in the person of Dr. Henar Hapos. So to cut it short, I was able to establish legally the first organization which I put up, and this is the International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers on the date of my birthday. So it was then very meaningful because this was the best gift that I received during my birthday. And then, Many individuals keep on contacting me, particularly professors from Pakistan. That is why we did the inauguration of the event on the month of June 29, 2019. And from Pakistan, Dr. Golam Ali Boriro and Dr. Aftab Ahmed Sharan came to Thailand and volunteered that they will be keynote speakers in this conference. And I am very happy because I was able to invite individuals outside Thailand and they came to nourish our clientele in here, particularly foreigners, English lecturers, English teachers, English foreign language teachers, both in the private and in the government um, institutions here in the kingdom of Thailand. After that event, there are many more conferences that we were able to um, conduct. And until this present, we were able to have uh, 19 conferences already with various teams and different speakers. And one among them is of course, our very own Dr. Samir Babu, who is a part of your university. I always include him in our conferences and I'm grateful for that because every time I invite him, he always accept my invitation. And of course, many of our participants were fascinated, not only with Dr. Samir Babu, but to all those who have joined us in these different conferences. And so, 
I suppose that these conferences that we had conducted is not enough, but rather there are more that we need to do. Like for example, linkaging or partnering with different institutions, recruiting members, doing research and publication, conducting research with foreign uh, researchers through partnership and many more. And so our organization was able to successfully expand in different countries. To date, there are 14 chapters of our organization, the International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers. The first one is Thailand being the home of the organization. And then the first country who partnered with us, whom we have, where we had opened our chapter is that, is the country which is adjacent to Thailand. And it happened that those participants who came there really wanted to have chapter of our organization. And then I told them that I'm not yet ready for this opportunity, but since they are committed to help and so, we opened a chapter in Vietnam. And then when we had also participants from Nepal, we opened another chapter in Nepal with of course uh, the leadership of these prominent educators and research leaders. After several months, there are also individuals who did their intent that uh, we need, there, there must be a need to open also a chapter in their country. And so we had a chapter in Pakistan and then in Indonesia, in Macau. And the first chapter that was established in Europe is in Portugal. Then the eighth one, this is my country. I am not actually Thai, but I am a Filipino who happened to be a worker, a lecturer in the kingdom of Thailand. And this organization keep on expanding its network. So we opened up another chapter in Iraq and then in Malaysia, in Myanmar, in Bangladesh. And we have many participants from India, which they believe that why is it that our national flag is not included in your posters? And we are also participants. Please do include our, uh, our um, flag, they said. But I explained to, to them that the flag that were included in our posters are those chapters of our organization wherein we had established. And recently, we established a chapter in India through the leadership of none other than Dr. Samir Babo, and then of course in Cambodia. So why is it that ISTAR is the most attractive among the three organizations that I have put up? The International Alliance of English Language Teachers is a discipline specific and it has only limited number of, uh, it has only limited members. Same way is true with that of the international network of editors and reviewers, because this organization is very strict. You cannot be a member of INER or international network of, ed of editors and reviewers if you are not an editor or a reviewer of reputable journals. That is number one requirement. And then for IAELT, this is only intended for English language practitioners. That is why the number of participants as well as members are only limited because they are discipline specific and there is a certain requirement that is uh, that are needed to be followed in these two organizations. ISTAR is an organization that is not discriminating 
uh, regardless of the discipline that you belong. In other words, ISAR is multidisciplinary. Aside from being multidisciplinary, how come that this organization is very attractive to all scholars around the world? It is because it has this charming, per, uh, charming personality. I put that acronym, char charming personality. And what is charming personality? Charming stands for the following values. C stands for charitable. Our organization offers free services. We, does not, uh, we do not collect registration fees, but it's simply for knowledge sharing. It is simply for calibrating the profile of any professional. We do help them. If they volunteer, we want to be a part of the steering committee. I want to be a speaker in your organization. As long as the theme of the conference is relevant or the topic that you are presenting is relevant to the team, then it is acceptable. And at the same time, charitable because we are also uh, doing outreach programs to individuals, especially those who are victims of the pandemic. For example, those who were unemployed when the pandemic strike the world, particularly those Filipinos who are working here in Thailand, we give some uh, in kinds in order that they have something to uh, something to partake. And aside from that, it is charitable in a sense that we do services to individuals as long as there is a member who is willing to accept that, uh, that act or that request. For example, editing of research, then we request someone to edit it before it will be submitted into a publication. And we do not charge anything. Why? Because we know that in the future, we will be rewarded. That is my own belief as a leader. If you invest something right now, do not think of the financial matters that you can get out of the events, but rather you need to invest your effort so that later on, if this will be spread in globally, then, People will say, what is this ISAR? Why, uh, why ISAR? Who are these people involved in ISAR? And then, of course, they will be the one to confess what is this organization. At the same time, they will be the one to give us members. And it is only through membership wherein our organization is profiting because it is a nonprofit organization. H stands for humble. All the staff in our organization are very simple and humble. I always say that you need to you need to maintain humility and simplicity. You did not. Uh, there's no need for you to brag who you are. Let them discover who is the person behind this. Let the people know indirectly who you are. Do not profess to the world that I am like this. I am. I have, achieved, I have achieved these things. My belief is that we need to maintain humility and simplicity all the time. And that is one way on how to attract individuals in an organization. A stands for adept, meaning our speakers, our trainers are well-skilled, well-trained. They are good. They are specialized in their own disciplines. R stands for refulgent, which means like a star, you are shining. It means that uh, you are always above others. You are all, 
uh, you have always you always have the edge over others every time you will be um, aligned with them. Why? It's because of the many experiences that you can gain from our own organization. M stands for monumental. Why monumental? Because we want you to make a very important person, a very special one, starting from uh, advertising your posters, uh, treating you, and many more acts which would, which any individual could feel that you are really in the pedestal. I stands for innovative. Of course, we always keep on innovating our own selves. We need to be creative all the time. And nocturnal, even at the wee hours, as long as we can read your messages, we will entertain you. And of course, we are more convenient working during nighttime than in daytime. And as you can see here in Thailand, we have already started our, uh, we have opened uh, our classes since July. 2020, we have already our face-to-face -face class, face-to-face uh, -face or on-site classes. And, uh, you know, the schedule right at the moment here in Thailand is really difficult compared to that of the usual thing that we do before the pandemic. And finally, G stands for God-fearing. Okay. So, the organizations that I established here in Thailand, the three organizations, International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers, International Alliance of English Language Teachers, and International Network of Editors and Reviewers are actually operating under the law of the Kingdom of Thailand, as well as the regulations of the Philippines because sooner or later, when I'll go back home to my own country, I need to continue what I am doing here in Thailand. So it is totally legal, ethically and legally in matters like that, there is legitimacy of these three organizations. All right, going back, with what I would like to share on mentoring. I would say that mentoring our members included establishing and nourishing cultures of research, which supported institutional accreditation, complied with ranking and promotion of faculty and increased publication productivity and impact through their citations. So we mentor our members not only by means of conducting conferences, but rather by nourishing the culture of research by means of providing them with the necessary documents that they need for the accreditation in our country, like providing them institutional membership and giving them the opportunity to partner with us, to link with us, to have an memorandum of agreement or memorandum of understanding, which is really necessary for the leveling of an institution, particularly in the Philippines. Apart from that, there were many professionals, teachers who were promoted because of what we are doing. Because of mentoring, we felt and there were many reports that they were promoted from their job. For example, from a plain teacher into a master teacher, from a lecturer or an instructor into an associate or a assistant professor to associate professor and a lot. And they have also earned designations apart from the academic rank that they have gained. We also help them in terms of publication by means of partnering with publishers 
because right now we don't have a publication we are planning to have it and i am still on the process of studying the procedure or the process on how to do it what are the lessons that i learned in mentoring i would like to borrow the ideas of my mentor also dr honara hapos that the lack of unifying program for research in public and private schools left gaps in the research capability of schools, which opened the doors to mentor leaders. The wave of world ranking of universities triggered a high demand for scopus publications, which generated trainings and mentoring for publications and citations. That is why we provided trainings, international trainings on intellectual property rights, peer reviewing and editing, thesis advising, and a lot of trainings pertaining to research and publication, as well as how to convert their thesis into a book. The success of ISAR, the International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers, the International Alliance of English Language Teachers, and INER, International Network of Editors and Reviewers, ignited the rise of similar organizations, came and fizzled for lack of sustaining mechanisms. My organizations have linkages and compliant to all, not complaint, but rather compliant to all government regulations. So while we are networking with other professionals around the, uh, across the globe, there are some organizations also who would like to partner with us, but I am very selective because I've learned that these organizations once they have learned the secret of ISTAR, IAELT, and INER. They will totally left us. And so um, this organization, I'm still happy because they have been benefited from us. When they approach us, when they approach our organization, when they approach me that they want to partner with me, they want to have a memorandum of agreement with me, I approve because what is collaboration anyway if we don't uh, if we don't invite and accept offer from other organizations because I believe that there should be no competition among organizations but rather collaboration. We need to help our own members. We do not need to compete but rather help our clients, help our members. But the thing is, after they have learned things from our organization, then they departed us because what they believe is that they need to profit, they need to gain profit out of the work that they are doing. But for me, it's all for charity. And then of course, what happened to them? They did not succeed because of their aim which is to profit. What are the opportunities for growth in mentoring the research leaders? I would like to address these reflections to the vice president for research, research coordinators, or any research leaders in a learning institution. That first and foremost, these research leaders should replace the current research guidelines to meet requirements for QS World Ranking, Center for Excellence, Accreditation, Foreign Collaboration, and Joint Authorship. Why? Because their guidelines might be obsolete or might not meet the standards of this 
accrediting agencies. That is why they need to review and replace with the current research guidelines. Apart from that, these research leaders should be required to include 60% of foreign-based thesis panelists to prevent inbreeding, not only to research leaders, but also to the educational leaders, especially those who are in the graduate studies. In most universities, globally, there is this what we call composition of panelists wherein all the panel members belong to the same institution. And what is the result of the research? Of course, it is, the idea in there is there is only one culture and this is what we call inbreeding. But if you invite individuals from different learning institutions from foreign countries, they can recommend best practices in their own home country wherein they could adapt. These uh, thesis writers could adapt in writing their own research. That is why in paneling, we need to look for foreign individuals who are specialists in that particular field so that the result would be better. I think there are some agencies or there are some institutions or universities who are adopting this now, but we need to do it um, not only in our, own, in our own institution, but rather we need to recommend it to others so that we can help them. And take note, the composition is 60%, meaning there should be more foreigners than that of the local panel members in that learning institution. For example, all right, may I request the participants to please okay. mute your microphone. Thank you so much. So let us say there are five panel members in that dissertation or thesis defense. Three out of five, three foreigners out of the five panelists should be um, considered because the result would be better and it is internationalized in nature. Apart from this, research leaders should create thesis digital repository for all levels so that these studies can be read and cited globally. So many institutions recommend their students or their graduates prior to their own graduation that they need to publish their work in a reputable journals, at least two or three, it depends upon the requirement of the university or the learning institution. And if they cannot do that, then they cannot graduate. But what is the use of publishing these papers if we do not have to start it within ourselves? Instead that you have to spend a lot of money paying for this publication because only a few could avail of a funding requirement that your work should be published. And in this, its publication is to be supported by the university. Only a few have that opportunity. So therefore, learning institutions, particularly those research and educational leaders should have the initiative to create thesis digital repository for all levels from the undergraduate to the highest level masterate to the doctorate. There should only be a teamwork between the secretariat, the information technology specialist, the librarian, and the dean of the different colleges 
in order to come up with this digital depository repository and in that way we can augment or we can eradicate problems of publication which is lack of funding apart from that educational leaders particularly the deans the vice president for academic affairs should create a scientific advisory committee for all academic programs. What's the use of this scientific advisory committee? Because if we have a scientific advisory committee, they will review the curriculum of the different programs in our university. And this will strengthen our uh, academic programs invite foreigners to be a member of the scientific advisory because in that way we can internationalize the program we should not be uh, contented with what is only needed in our own particular uh, community but also what is the demand in the global spectrum in the international arena what is needed? Therefore, if we include foreigners to review these academic programs, then we can strengthen them. Next, these educational leaders and research leaders should require the publication of research review questionnaire with exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis, including ITR and results of every thesis and dissertation. So this should be in Scopus journals. Okay. Why? Because when you publish a paper, the paper that you need to submit to this publication are condensed, meaning not all the parts will be included in there. For example, the methodology, which is an important part of a thesis when you publish a paper it will only be summarized into one sentence sometimes two sentences or even three sentences but then if you publish this research review of this questionnaire and some portions of it then what will happen then there is the possibility that those individuals who are conducting a research, if they read that, they would know the process or the methodology that you have done so far. Next is, these leaders should conduct a foreign funded and foreign co-authored researches. This is now the trend. If there is a foreign funded research and you need uh, foreign co-authors, then look for someone of which, of whom you are in the same ground or in the same field or interest. And then of course, a researcher wherein you can gather an information similar to that of the information that you need in your own in your own country for example one theme of a research or a research topic wherein it is not only relevant to your own country but also in another country well instead that um you go and gather in that country why don't you Look for someone who could be your co-author and he or she will be the one to gather the data and then put together and make it into one. Next, these leaders should require the implementation of quality assurance of research, publication, citation, and utilization through a research manual. I think all institutions have a research manual 
and we need to follow this for uh, purposes of for purposes of uh, uniformity, not only uniformity, but we need to comply it and keep on improving for the benefit of the whole community. And then of course, this educational leader should also create a YouTube channel for advocacy of research activities, including Wikipedia and website, because it is in this way wherein researchers could be encouraged to do or to engage themselves with more researches. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. That's how we mentor and that's my idea on how mentoring should be for these educational leaders and research leaders. So thank you and have a wonderful night. I hope I could share, I, I have shared something that is re very relevant to all of you. And I am now uh, much willing to have an interaction with you. We'll discuss together. We will share each other's insights and best practices. Thank you and have a great night.